So if, if I may quote you back at you from your website, um, uh, on your website, it says, if there's a theme that runs through my work and writing on this site, it's the interplay between the shift towards agile thinking and the technical patterns and practices that make agile software development practical. While the specifics of technology change rapidly in our profession, fundamental practices and patterns are more stable. I'm really interested in those kind of deeper insights too, in terms of what are the durable ideas. And it seems to me that often we, we as software developers get a bit obsessed by things that are really a bit more, off, more, more ephemeral than we believe them to be. And that the real value is, is in some other things. Could you expand a little bit on that idea? And what do you see as some of the underlying practices and patterns that might you know, carry, be, more, be more generally applicable? I, I, I perfectly accept maybe not, maybe not globally applicable, but that there are always exceptions. But, but what are the principles? What makes what are the things that are likely to end up with a, a higher chance of success and less likely to end up with tomorrow's legacy system today? Um, well, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's what my whole um, writing is about, right? It's trying yes. to identify those. Um, I mean, some of them are quite broad and some of them quite narrow. Um, but the point is that you, the, I mean, take um, self-testing code, for instance. So I, I use I like to use the term self testing code as opposed to test driven development, um, because test driven development is a technique I love. I really like using it a lot. It's but to me the the core thing that I want is this self testing code ability, which is I want to be able to be able to throw a command at the system and say test yourself, and it comes back, and if it comes back green, I know okay I'm okay. The change I just made, I didn't break anything. Now, if I build the system using test-driven development, I'll get there. And test-driven development will also <coughs> help me with the design process as well. So it's a great technique. But yeah. the key output to me is having that self-testing code. And there are other ways to get that as well, but most of which are, are not as good as TDD. But it's self-testing code's the key. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a, a great technique that I can use any, almost anywhere. Right. And I've, I've used that technique in, you know, you'd use it in, in small talk, you use it in Java, you use it in JavaScript, all sorts of different languages. You have to make sure you get the tools to help you do that. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, particularly after the rise of JUnit, people realize what, but actually it wasn't that difficult to build tools that would help you build self-testing code. Yeah. Uh, and so you see JUnit ports and clones um, to all over the place. And of course, JUnit itself was a port of an original small talk um, library. Yeah. Um, and so that's a, that, an example of that kind of fundamental notion that says, um, if you understand the importance of self testing code, whenever you go to a new environment, the first thing you want to do is figure out how can I get my self testing set up going? Mm -hmm. How do I get that situation where I get that logical green bar that tells me, oh, okay, the change I just made, I didn't break anything. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so that's an example of one of those fundamental principles that to me transcends the technology that you're working in. And when you're in a technology where it's difficult, like UI technology often has that, then another principle comes to mind, which is the humble object, which says, if I've got something that's difficult to test, let's get every piece of behavior I possibly can out of that object into a separate object that I can test easily. Yeah. And then I can you know, relax with my green bar again. Yeah. So that's another technique and you use it with um, UI technology, but often also with distributed systems, um, remote interactions, you immediately say, okay, I want to make a really simple gateway object that doesn't do very much so that I can test everything else mm -hmm. and keep everything else under test. Um, and so that, again, the humble object, a great um, basic um, idea that once you know it, you can use it in a whole host of different places. Those are the things I, I'm after, whether they're very big, like self-testing code in terms of scope or very small like humble object which is just a simple piece of how you get that kind of thing to work yeah 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 absolutely i mean i mean the 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 idea of i tend to use the term tdd but self-testing code is i think much 
it has deeper implications than than people who don't practice it realize very often right. i think and you know what, what, what as you say you know you get that surety that yes my code does what i think it works but it also it, it's also the the, the shortest route to getting feedback on the quality of my design that I know right. how to achieve. If your test is hard to write, your design's bad. It's, nothing, it's not the test's fault. It's you, you've got a bad design, so change the design. Well, exactly. That's the, the, the beauty of TDD for me is that it forces you to think hard about interfaces. Yes. And we know that inter getting good interfaces is such a key part of getting a well-structured system. Because yes. if you can get your interfaces working well, then that makes your code clear and understandable, makes it easier to change. Um, and also, you know, I, I can deal with a certain amount of mess in the implementation details. I'd rather not, but I can yeah. deal with it if it's contained and encapsulated behind good, clear interfaces. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard to come up with a good interface. It's hard to learn how to do that as a, as a developer. Yeah. And TDD's great strength is it kind of forces you to think about interface. Get I, interface... I, and test it if you'll forgive me advertising my book for a minute mm, um, <coughs> I, 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 I i went i went through an exercise i wanted to demonstrate some some unpleasant code i wanted to demonstrate some 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 problems in in the code and so i started writing this example as we were talking about earlier on and trying to come up with an example and i started where i always start i started doing test driven development and I couldn't. I couldn't write code as bad as I wanted it to be and do <laughs> test-driven development. So I had to stop writing the tests and write the code as, you know, <laughs> I felt like I time traveled back 20 or 30 years. It was just it was just crazy. Um, and so I, I think I think that's, you know, that's a deeply undervalued um, practice. It, it's one of those things when I first, when, when the light bulb went off over my head and I first practiced test-driven development, I thought, oh, this is going to take over the world. I, I was wrong twice. I thought that I thought that object orientation was going to take over the world when I, the light bulb went over my head when I learned that too. And, and neither of those has quite quite taken over the world in the way that I expected. Um, but uh, but I still I, I still think I, I don't want to work in a team ever again that doesn't do test driven development really. Mm. You know, day to day because I think that's much by far the most effective practice that's probably surfaced during my time as a software developer. Yeah, I mean, and I'm with you. If I was working, if I was doing real work again and having to write software on a team for a living, I would definitely use TDD. Yeah, yeah. Um, the software I do write is just uh, my tool chain for my website. Um, and I don't use as much TDD on there as um, you would need to because um, because it's just producing output. So yes. half the time I'm I, I don't have an expected value because I'm writing the code and looking looking at the screen saying is that okay, and also I have the perfect um, regression test suite because I just build the entire website and diff it against one that I know is good, um, which is a very crude regression test but it works very well. <laughs> but, but then occasionally I'll come into situations where there is some more complicated behavior involved. And then, yes, I do have a bunch of unit tests to handle those because, and I sometimes use TDD to do that. Yes. Um, but again, it's knowing when to apply it in the right kind of circumstance. And once, you know, for most of the kind of commercial software that we work on at Footworks, TDD is, is an essential. And yeah. Uh, yeah. one of the nice things about this is, I'm in a new. I'm you know living in an organisation where things like TDD and continuous integration uh, are seen as a normal way of practice, yes. and that's to do with not so much me, but all of the leaders. You know, people like Brandon, uh, people like Eric Dernenberg, um, people like Unmesh, who carry that leadership through across the organisation because they've come to the same conclusion that you and I have. That yes. that's how we find find ourselves most effective. And um, we just have to see how that spreads across the rest of the industry. I mean, it, in some ways, it's moved faster than, than I thought it would, actually, mm -hmm. um, because I know how long it takes for ideas to propagate. So yes, it's depressing because you'd like to think that it could have been a bit more widely used, and particularly the way in which so many people are taking on agile and completely forgetting these technical practices that actually are the underpinnings to make it work effectively. Yeah. Um, but, um, but as I said, I mean, these things do take a long time to, to work through, particularly 
when we're in a profession that can't really measure our output and productivity effectively. Um, and when you can't do that, it makes it much harder to, to, to effectively use the scientific method on ourselves. Yes. Because, yes. you know, if you can't measure your outputs, then it's very hard to tell whether one thing's better than another.